In video number two, I touched on abrasives. As you can see, this material, I've cleaned some of this up already. You can see it's kind of shiny, but I wanted to run through some of the abrasives. I had spoke about the angle grinder and utilizing the uh, different uh, grits of sandpaper. I will show you what those different grits do as you go on the material. Now, you can see as it's taking the oxides off, you can see the different colors there in that uh, oxidation that you need to get off in order to be able to aluminum weld. Um, and then this being the polishing discs, that does a really nice job, keeps it much smoother and it's more of a polished finish. So looking at that, you can see the difference here. That's got some real coarse grindings in it and this is really smooth and polished. It's uh, much finer. So it'd be like using a much finer sandpaper so that if you wanted to polish it out afterwards, you'll be able to polish it much easier with a lot less work. Then you can use the uh, die grinder with the wire wheel on it, of course. That works really well also. So this would be the general purpose one that you would use. And that works good at, uh, basically you can go on and you can, you can see it take that, uh, you see the dark spots as it takes off the oxidation off the aluminum. And you can see some of it that's left on it. So you need to get the oxidation off of the aluminum in order to be able to weld the aluminum. The uh, aluminum melts at about 1221 degrees Fahrenheit and if you were to look at uh, the oxidation, the oxidation melts anywhere between 3000 and 8000 degrees depending upon who you talk to and again that's in degrees Fahrenheit. So the bottom line is, if you're welding on aluminum, it is imperative that you get the oxidation off before you do the welding. Because if you're welding specifically on a thin piece of material, the material can melt before the oxidation ever gets burned off of it. And if that's the case, you'll have no material left to weld to. So getting the oxidation off is, is primary thing that needs to be done. And if you don't get it off, you're going to have problems. You're going to fight in aluminum welding. Clean, clean, clean is what aluminum welding is about. So you get the oxidation off before you do any type of welding on aluminum, and then you will have a lot less problems. It will go much smoother. Any impregnation of greases or oils, that needs to be cleaned off before you do any of the cleanup with a grinder because you obviously don't want to get that uh, oils or greases in, into your grinding wheels or your wire wheels or whatever you're cleaning with. There's my piece of aluminum. It's tacked up into basically a T-joint. Uh, this would be a fillet weld. Uh, it's all cleaned up, both sections, and ready to be welded. As you can see, I have the ground connected close. Uh, the ground clamp being this clamp right here. This clamp is holding the piece down to the table so it doesn't move when I weld it. Um, the reason that you want to have the ground clamp hooked up real close or uh, real close to where you're going to weld on aluminum is because of its conductivity. It has a real high conductivity to heat so basically the whole piece of material is going to get almost to the same temperature while you're welding it. So you really have to worry in aluminum, like let's say you're going to weld on a, a motorcycle case that's cracked. Uh, let's say a chain popped off or something and it bound up in there and it cracked the case. Uh, other than having problems with having to have it super clean and you have to clean it up really well because the grease from inside of the chain case has impregnated the aluminum. So other than that, you also have to have your ground as close as possible to where you're going to weld and you need to remove as many of the parts like oil seals and uh, rubber parts that are in there and gaskets because the heat will wreck those gaskets and uh, seals and you'll have to replace them anyway. Uh, you can sometimes get away with it by cold damp rags, uh, ways to keep the heat away from the seals uh, basically, as I say, cold and wet rags, but you, you definitely cannot get any water or anything in the area where you're going to weld because uh, aluminum welding and water doesn't work well at all together. Um, so 
you need to make sure that it's clean and it's ready to go. As you've seen, while I was welding this piece of aluminum, it took a lot of heat to actually get it to start to be able to start taking filler wire. And that heat rises, so the lower piece, which is attached to the workbench right now, is going to take a lot more heat than the upper piece. So as you're going and you're feeding that wire in a little bit at a time, sometimes it balls up on the end and you lose a little bit, what you have to do is flick that little piece of rod off of the end there and move on with the next section. Now you can see in the middle of that that there's one little pinhole there. Um, in order to be able to clean that up, that's obviously a little bit of uh, grease or something maybe that was in there. You'll always have that with aluminum where it's very hard to get it clean and have a perfect weld. So you can clean that up with a wire brush or whatever you want to clean it with. Uh, obviously, again, if you want to polish it, you don't want to use a wire brush. But you would clean that again and you could run back over the top of that again and uh, burn that out of there. And as you stay in that section, you'll be able to burn that out. It takes a little bit sometimes with aluminum. It takes a little playing to get it to work with you. Uh, it takes some time. Um, different machines different uh, types of machines that you use out there. Uh, the newest is uh, what they call a square wave. It used to be all high frequency which would be like the old synchro wave machines. That was continuous high frequency welding. Uh, now the new square wave technology which is what I'm using. Um, it's a much better process for many reasons. Uh, with the old uh, synchro waves, you needed to ball your tungsten, and by balling the end of the tungsten, it isn't a real, uh, it spreads out, it's a very wide bead. You can't concentrate your heat in one spot, and you needed to use the green type of tungsten. As you noticed uh, before in my tungsten video, the first video I did, you noticed that they had red tips on them, so they'll talk red tip, green tip. Uh, that's the type of tungsten and the percent of thoriation that's inside of the tungsten. And the square wave utilizes the red tungsten, which is the same tungsten that you use on steels also. And with the square wave, you will uh, grind your tungsten basically down to a pinpoint, and that pinpoint makes it much easier to be able to uh, keep your heat in a smaller width of area so that you can concentrate it in one spot and it's not a real wide bead. It's a, a much more concentrated bead which means you can put less heat into the material which in aluminum or thin stainlesses it uh, would mean that you'll have less warpage. So there's a lot that goes into this and there's a lot to think about. Um, this is all I have for today. If you have any questions 
uh, get back to me, I will put out some more videos.